the latest controversy from the Israeli parliament member Hanin Zobi. It's very cheap manipulation for the victims of the Holocaust. I can represent the victim of the Holocaust, not Israel. Hmm. It's me, the Palestinian, who stand loyal to the lessons of the Holocaust. It is suitable to compare, logical to compare Israel and the Israeli public opinion with Germany in the, in the 30s. With Germany in the 30s. With these Robbie. statistics. Robbie. Shame on you! With these Shame on you! The statement was made at a Palestinian unity event in Birmingham, England. We are opposed to Arab party. During the speech, violent Zobi backers snatched a participant's phone, sinking the event into chaos. In 2010, Zobi was on board the Turkish ship the Mavi Marmara, sailing to break Israel's blockade of the Gaza Strip. Violence broke out as Israeli commandos boarded the vessel to be met with fierce resistance. Zobi then said, It was clear from the size of the force that the purpose was to cause the largest possible number of fatalities. The Gaza flotilla claimed to be a humanitarian mission delivering aid to Gaza, an assertion ultimately debunked by the BBC in 2010. More recently, in 2014, days after three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped and brutally murdered by Palestinians, Zoabi said, They are not terrorists. They are people who do not see any way to change their reality, and they are compelled to use means like these. Multiple attempts have been made to disqualify Zoabi from participating in Israel's elections, citing her many expressions of disloyalty to the state. But all attempts were either thwarted by the Israeli Supreme Court or didn't pass in Parliament. Zobi has been able to stir deep debates within Israeli society. Debates about where, if at all, free speech should be restrained. Michael Pluchak, I-24 News. And joining us is Mandy Blumenthal. She attended the event. She's the woman seen there yelling, shame on you, before getting her phone ripped out of her hand and into that violent confrontation. Mandy, now that the dust has settled a little bit, what is your response to how things played out at that event? I think it's disgusting that this is allowed to happen, whether it's in Israel or England, that Zabi seems to always incite violence. She might not do it herself, but she really needs to be um, held accountable for her words, her, uh, her actions lead other people to actually do things. I'm really disgusted as well that she's allowed into England to actually make these hate speeches. In England, they say that um, incitement to hate is illegal, and I believe that's what she's doing. Mandy, can you accept that at the same time that free speech is free speech and that she could be allowed to stand up in the UK and say those things? Free speech, but incitement to hate is illegal, and that's what she's doing. All right, Mandy Blumenthal, thanks very much for weighing in uh, with your response. The pro-Palestinian group hosting the event sent us this response. We have hosted Hanin Zoabi, they write, on many occasions and are proud to do so. We regard her as a courageous defender of human rights and a powerful advocate, in particular for Palestinian citizens of Israel. We understand a meeting with Hanin was disrupted by pro-Israel supporters, including members of UKIP, a far-right party within UK politics. This part of a pattern of supporters of Israel seeking to disrupt meetings advocating for Palestinian rights. We do not condone any act of physical force, no matter who the perpetrator. The debate around that event, though, is far bigger than just that event. Here with me is Gideon Levy. He's a columnist for Haaretz and a member of the newspaper's editorial board, along with Ariel Bolstein, Israel Hayom columnist. Thank you both very much for being here. Let's start with the origin first of this event, that speech. What's your reaction? Is somebody really surprised that Israel haters use violence? I'm not surprised. That happens all the time. They dreamt to destroy the state of Israel by physical force, by military force. They failed once and again, and they switched to other forms of violence. First of all, verbal violence, using lies, using all the manipulation and propaganda methods to distort the real image of Israel. They do it all the time. They probably learned those methods from their predecessors, either in Nazi Germany in the 30s or from the Soviet Union, who hugely supported this kind of anti-Israeli movements. And they continue to do it. It's unfortunate. I think it's only immoral 
it's also illegal to do it because they call to destroy the state of Israel. That's the only state in the whole world, in the whole family or community of nations that some people are calling to destroy it. Gideon. That's obviously totally ridiculous. The only political murders in the history of Israel were made by the right-wingers. They are the only violent side there. And there is no symmetry between left and right within Israel. As for critics outside, uh, I, I didn't hear one word of incitement in uh, Zoabi's speech, incitement for violence. From what we heard here, I've not been there. From what we heard here, I didn't hear one sentence that I can't identify with, one sentence which calls to violence. Where was there a call for violence? Do you think the comparison between Israel and Nazi Germany in the 30s she is She spoke about the 30s, and the vice chief of staff of the Israeli army said very, very similar things. It's a legitimate view, and no Nobody can censor it, for sure not uh, British Jews who sit there and know very little about the truth here. Oh, yeah. They know a lot about Nazi Through propaganda, the propaganda. And, the and that's propaganda, why they obviously. continue yeah. to oppose to this lady who justifies terror. She justifies murders of Israelis, including children. She calls to violent opposition to Israel. She is supporting all the possible Israeli animals who dream to destroy us. There is some kind of frontier to democracy because when people try to abuse our democracy, when I'm talking about our democracy, it's both Israeli and Western world democracy. They are just trying to use all the freedoms that we as a free society would want to grant all our citizens to destroy it from inside. It's always very funny to hear people who support the military occupation, this brutal regime, speaking about democracy. I mean, yes, hypocrisy has democracy. borders. Hypocrisy has borders. When you support a military brutal occupation, you are not a Democrat. You can't be perceived as a Democrat, and you know nothing about democracy. I'm, I'm nothing a about real democracy. democracy. We're going to pause democracy here. I'm going to let you. Democracy only for Jews is not a democracy. I'm going to let you respond you, when we're back. I fought for democracy against a real totalitarian ah, regime. And I the know. occupation. Gentlemen, I know what we're going to go out so for a quick break. Your break. Your there are full Russia. responses when we're back, including where should the line be drawn in a democracy, and should any line be drawn at all? We're back here on Debrief, continuing a heated debate after a pro-Palestinian speech in the UK this weekend descended into violence. The speaker, controversial member of Israeli parliament, Hanin Zoabi, still here with me in the studio, Gideon Levy, a Haaretz columnist and a member of the paper's editorial board, along with Israel Hayom columnist Ariel Bolstein. Before the break, I raised the issue of where the line should be drawn. So let's put aside this very controversial uh, speech. Zoabi is highly controversial in and outside Israel. Should there ever be a, lawn a line drawn in a democracy of where free speech ends and hate speech begins? I, I, I wish there wouldn't be any borders because it's very hard to put the, the line. On the right wing, we have so many races to call to, to kill the Arabs. And still, I think that they have, as long as it doesn't, let's put it very clearly, as long as it goes together with the Israeli law, everything is legitimate. When you cross the law, and the law is very clear, when you cross the law, then, uh, you know, you should uh, when pay you the When you have price. calls also amongst Arab Israelis and Israel or Palestinians calling also for violence, you mentioned the right wing calling for violence, should that be just as acceptable? Listen, uh, we have to define what is terror and who is the terrorist. I mean, uh, when a pilot... Uh, sends missiles on a civil population and kills 500 women and 500 uh, children in 2014 in Gaza, is he a terrorist or is he a brave fighter or is he a patriot? What is he? So we better don't get into it because terror well, is let's something... So let's say on free speech because that's a key issue Free here. speech should be almost unlimited in my view, almost unlimited. Ariel? There are two clear red lines for free speech. Festivalism is incitement to violence. Violence is totally unacceptable in a human society. That's why this lady, Hanin Zoabi, who is calling to violence, who is calling their audience to kill Israelis, that's totally crystal clear to me. And all 
people, all decent people, that that is unacceptable. And I want to follow up with you as society. well. And just a second, the second red line, the call to destroy the, the state of Israel is totally unacceptable, both from the legal point of view and from the moral point of view. It's a pure racism. When somebody wants to destroy Sweden, for example, and argues that Swedish people doesn't have a right to their own state, that's racism. It's exactly the same racism when the anti-Israeli front, which consists of bizarre mixture of anti-Semites, jihadists comes, and useful idiots, when they call to destroy Israel, when that's it comes racism, from the Israeli right wing, if if racist if somebody, statements come from the Israeli right wing as well, if somebody that calls to violence from any political camp, that's unacceptable, of course. But we we are seeing that the real terror and. Uh, I do not see any moral problem to define terror when Gazans fire rockets to Israeli cities in order to kill civilians. Gideon. That's terror. When they try to kill our children, my children, that's terror. Poor victims, poor victims. The occupier is the victim. That's really the only they, example they in history. It, they did it before I let 60 let you, I speak. Let, I let let you speak. The only example in history in which the occupier dares to present himself as an innocent victim who is really due to all those terrible threats. In any case, when football fans, week after week, scream, week after week, death to the Arabs, should we send them all to jail, according to this gentleman? Yes. I think, uh, I, I never saw that Israel is taking any measures toward those who scream every week. Or the settlers who fill up the West Bank with graffitis, death to the Arabs. Was one settler brought to justice for, and this is clearly incitement for violence, death to the Arabs, there is nothing more clear than this. Should that be held to the same standards? Of course. And Israel is filled with graffiti in Arabic, kill Jews. That's why every, I'm happy every, you read every Arabic. person. I'm happy you read Arabic. Yes, okay. I do. Every person who uses this kind of violent speech should be brought to justice. Okay. It's crystal clear. The same moral standard to everybody. And the first should be member of Knesset Hanin Zoabi, okay. who is the real violent insider. Do you think that there is actually an equal reaction to incitement coming from all of those sides? Usually, yes. But Israel, as a state, is a very free society. And a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Israel haters from the Arab sector, from the extreme left, use and abuse this kind of freedom once and again. To write a member of parliament, a quite important member of parliament, of the Israeli parliament, Batsari Smutrich, presented his plan to transfer the Palestinians. Voluntarily. Voluntarily. Yes, voluntarily. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and okay. you, you 20 understand seconds, it's a joke. one moment, Ariel, you have 20 seconds. I, I was I, transferred okay. voluntarily. I okay. wanted to live in a Jewish state. One okay. I they came don't want and to went to Israel. That's their land, and they don't want to leave it. Russia was not your let's, land, and Israel is your land. Let's ask them the if they want to do it. They don't. And, uh, <laughs> you five no, seconds. Have, sure. And, and nobody calls to put him to justice even though it's quite a violent. Gentlemen, thank you very much. The debate's always continuing here on Debrief. We'll be back tomorrow.